Hello and welcome everybody. We've just had the fifth anniversary for Fate Grand Order NA and with it came some updated farming quests. So in this video we're going to discuss some teams that can farm those quickly, efficiently, consistently, as well as doing so pretty early on in your account's life cycle. So let's go ahead and discuss. From the homepage we're going to go into the Caldea Gate, we're going to go to the daily quests, and then the three types of quests that we have access to here are the Treasure Vault, which is for QP, which is the in-game currency that you use for just about everything. There's the Training Grounds, that is going to get you the items that you will need to ascend your servants and increase their level caps. The one that we're going to discuss, and the only one I'm going to show off in this video, is the Red Type Quests, which are the Ember Gathering Quests. Which is how you get the EXP material or item that you will use to actually level up your servants to their current level cap. The team that works for this one also works for the training ground quest, or the um, the treasure vault quest, excuse me. I have a separate video on the training ground quests, they're a little bit harder. They take a little bit of a different uh, kind of approach. So this video is going to discuss how to farm the max level or extreme difficulty level 60, whatever you want to call it, um, treasure vault as well as ember gathering. So let's go ahead and get into it. Now, if you watched my old free-to-play farming guide video that I put out a long, long time ago, the team that we built, you might remember, looked a lot like this. Because the structure of this new, updated, higher-level quest is a little bit different, the team that we're going to build around it is going to look a little different as well. The biggest difference is going to occur on the third wave. In the old quests, the third wave was three kind of medium tankiness or three medium HP enemies in the new version of this quest it's going to be one enemy with like 35 135 or 140,000 uh, HP so instead of an AoE servant who can do solid damage to all three enemies we need one single target servant who can do really big damage to one enemy in this video we're going to use Lupu if you have a better single target preferably Berserker feel free to use them. That servant does not need to charge their own Noble Phantasm or have any real special effects at all. Just whoever you have that can do a bunch of damage, preferably with their Noble Phantasm, all at once and kill an enemy who has a lot of HP. In spite of how daunting it might sound to go up against a kind of mini boss with like 140,000 HP at the end of the level, the third servant's job is actually pretty easy. They're going to have their own buffs, their own single target Noble Phantasm damage multipliers, as well as whatever buffs you have left, maybe from a Mystic Code or from our support servant, which is a topic that we're going to discuss in just a second. So they don't need a hugely helpful craft essence. They need it to start them with 50% Noble Phantasm meter, but not really any more than that. So for the purpose of this video, we're going to use one that is low level, does not give all attack stats, and does not buff damage at all. You'll see that we'll still be just fine. So if you have anything better than this, which hopefully you do, um, you should be okay. If what you have is, is quite low quality for dealing damage like this is, you'll still be okay. Now our support servant we're going to change. In our original video, we used Waver. Waver's not really especially meta anymore, especially since now that Castoria exists. So instead of Waver, we're going to switch to a Castoria support, and um, just because she's going to be a lot easier to find on your friends lists going forwards than Waver is. So we've brought in Castoria, uh, Castor Altria, whatever you want to call her. I'm going to call her Castoria for the rest of this video just because that's what I'm used to calling her. The other two servants in the middle, Arash and Spartacus. Those two are pretty much set as they are. Specifically, Spartacus has the tremendously helpful ability to charge his own Noble Phantasm, which makes it really easy to charge him up to 100, and Arash can charge his own Noble Phantasm. He also removes himself from the battlefield after he's done being useful, which is a tremendously helpful ability that is going to allow us to open up a lot of different possibilities in our team comps. I had a lot of questions on the first video asking, well, what if you are farming a quest that has Lancers in the first wave and Arash can't kill them? Well, the answer is that you just take Arash anyways. He's probably not going to be able to clear the wave, but that's going to be the case whether or not there are Lancers. The first wave in this difficulty of this quest is significantly tankier than it used to be. 
Um, and you're probably going to need two turns on the first wave, whether there's Lancers or not. So just take a rush anyways, it's fine. Just understand you'll need to use his MP on the first turn, and then take a second turn to just face card down a couple enemies who will have a, a tiny amount of HP remaining. Spartacus is... Um, probably has the toughest job out of any of our servants here, because he's going to get relatively few buffs externally, and he's going to have a decently tanky middle wave that he needs to be able to clear. He also needs a craft essence that starts him with preferably at least 50% Noble Phantasm Gauge, so give him your best craft essence that gives starting NP but also buffs damage in some way. For this video I'm going to use this one, it's quite low level, it does give all attack stats, it also gives a little bit of damage buff, so it'll help out and, and make that second wave a little bit more consistent. If you have a better craft essence than this, by all means, feel free to use it. <clears throat> Here's where it gets a little bit interesting depending on how long you've been playing and the overall strength of your account. In our original video, we used this Mystic Code to give an extra 20% Noble Phantasm Gauge to one ally. You can still do that, that'll still work just fine. You could also use the Chaldea Combat Uniform Mystic Code to order change in like a Shakespeare, buff your party's buster damage, give somebody an extra 20%, that kind of thing. Totally, you could do either of those if you want to. Either of those versions of this team will still work. As you can see, I've got level 10 in both of those, so I don't want to use those, maybe. <clears throat> if you've been playing for a while, you might find yourself in the same situation. So if you have another Mystic Code that you want to farm EXP for while you're doing this and don't want to use either of the um, the Mage's Association or the Kaleya Combat Uniform, you can. The caveat is that Arash needs to be able to Noble Phantasm on his own on turn one with no external help from any support or from any mystic code. Now there's a handful of ways that you can accomplish that. If you have his middle append skill unlocked, uh, that'll give him 10% at the start of the battle. If you have that leveled all the way up, it'll give him 20% at the start of the battle. And of course his own skill 3 will charge his Noble Phantasm Gauge as well. If it's at level 10, 30%. If it's at level 6, 25%. If it's at level 1, I believe 20%. So, for example, if you had this non-max limit broken version of this craft essence that starts him with 60, you could then put on the append skill for an extra 20, and then you could put on uh, his... Or you could use the append skill at level 1, which would give him another 10, put him at 70. You could use the level 10 version of his third regular skill for an extra 30%, which would get him to 100. You could use the max limit broken version of the same craft essence that gives him 75 and then have the third skill at level 6 or higher, that would get him to 100 without the append skill. And there's any other number of ways that you could get him to 100% NP charge without any help just based on his own skills and the craft essence that he's using. So however you do the math that gets him to 100 without any help from anybody else, good enough. Um, it'll all it'll all work out. So with that, the quest or the uh, the team is pretty much ready for the quest. You have two uh, bond farm slots open, so I will add some servants there that I can just throw in the back of the uh, throw in the back and, and let them farm some bond while we're doing our daily farming. And with that, we're ready to do the quest. And just in case I wasn't clear enough earlier, all of that stuff about Arash and needing to get himself to 100 by himself is only relevant if you don't want to use um, either the, the Combat Uniform or the Mage Association Mystic Code. Now, as you can see, these enemies are pretty tanky. You know, Arash doesn't have class advantage here. In fact, he has disadvantage against the Lancer in the middle. And these two on the ends have almost 30,000 HP, which is a lot to ask of a one-star servant. As a result, unless these are all Sabres or all Berser Berserkers, Arash is probably not going to be able to clear this wave on his own. Unless you have him grailed to 100 or something. 
So what we'll do instead is we'll go with his Noble Phantasm, and then we will layer some Buster cards behind him from the other servants. You want to avoid Arash's cards because he's going to kill himself at the end of his Noble Phantasm. Layer the Buster cards such that you don't use the same servant twice in a row. I'll show you what I mean. The reason that we do that is that the first card, if it kills an enemy, and you're using the same servant for the second and the third card, the servant will attack the same enemy twice. Instead of, if there's a, uh, a change in the servant who's attacking, and the enemy killed by the second card is already dead, the target will switch. You'll get a feel for this if you just play a little bit. Anyways, go ahead and uh, just try to end the wave with your face cards. The enemy should be pretty close to dead after the Arash Noble Phantasm. In the second wave, we'll go ahead and get Spartacus charged up. His own skill didn't quite get him there, but good thing we have Castoria, whose first skill gives 30% charge to the entire party. We also use Spartacus. Spartacus's attack buff. And then as you can see, once again, these enemies are fairly tanky, so we'll layer the Buster cards behind him in the same way, such that on the off chance somebody happens to survive, we're, we're ready to hit, hopefully, at least two of them. Um, but it wasn't necessary this time. That's good. At the final wave, we go ahead and get Lubu, or whoever your single target Berserker is, ready to go. If you have a higher rarity or better damaging single target Berserker, feel free to use them. Use up any uh, buffs that we have access to, in my case the Mystic Code, um, Castoria's middle skill, finished him. Um, getting up to 100%, and then he had his own damage buffs as well. And we will just let her rip. So just about every part of this team, um, as we mentioned, if you have better versions of some of these things, feel free to swap out the pieces that I have going for upgrades or improvements. Uh, you just need to make sure that you're doing your arithmetic and making sure that you're able to hit 100% Noble Phantasm Gauge on each of your three servants on turn 1, 3, and 4, basically. Um, <clears throat> but once you get that down, it's not too bad. Uh, I'll just put that team back on screen. To let you see that uh, the three servants that we used to deal all the damage came from the friend point gotcha, so... Shouldn't be hard to get any of these three. Lubu as well is also available in regular gacha. The craft essences that they're using all came from regular gacha or from events, but you don't have to use these ones specifically. Like I said, really anything with 50% starting gauge or better should more or less do the trick, um, especially if you're going to allow yourself to to use these other mystic codes that will allow you to be a little bit more generous with the Noble Phantasm charging and a little bit less restrictive on what craft essences you can use. Craft essences like this are given out for events all the time. They're also in the regular gotchas. You do some rolls for servants that you want, you'll probably stumble across a couple of these that uh, give you a good starting charge. Whether that's Devilish Bodhisattva, or Kaleidoscope, or um, there's a handful of others as well that are just available in the permanent gacha. And then more all the time in uh, event gachas and whatnot. So not too, too difficult to come by, especially if you've been playing for a little while. And then Castoria came from our support list, our friends list. Doesn't have to actually be from a friend. Can be from just... We don't need her Noble Phantasm, is what I'm trying to communicate. So if you go into the qu and you feel like none of your friends have Castoria, um, like none, well, like none of your friends have a Castoria going, uh, you can go down here below your actual friends and into just the random people, and you'll probably find one or two Castorias down there as well. Some people also put her in the all slot, so maybe check that if you're having trouble. And you can just keep uh, refreshing if you need to the, uh, the update list.
button. We'll just refresh it. And then if there's no Castoria from somebody that you're friends with, just scroll below the friends. You'll notice the uh, handshake symbol goes away. That means that they're not your friend currently. And you can probably find one there uh, eventually. So, so as I mentioned, the one that you borrowed does not necessarily have to be from your friends list, just from the uh, support list somehow or another. That does it for this video. That same team will work on the the uh, level 60 QP gathering quest, the training or treasure vault as well. Uh, at a one-to-one -one ratio, you don't have to change it at all. You can make that team with Lubu, Spartacus, Arash, set it in one of your slots, and then use it on Ember quests or QP quests. Um, it works the same way. They're the same kind of structure with the tank your mini boss at the end in the uh, in the third wave. In the description underneath the video, I'm going to have this follow code, which has been on the screen for a minute. You can give me a follow, which will allow you to use these servants during part one story quests. Especially if you are a newer account, you're having some trouble attracting stronger accounts to be friends with you and gain access to their servants to help you out. You can, uh, you can follow somebody. One of those people could be me if you are so inclined. Um, get access to these servants and then use them during part one story quests. I'm also going to have my Discord contact information in the description below. You can reach out to me if you want to have a longer form discussion or just discuss something about this game not in the YouTube comment section. I'm happy to accommodate that, so please reach out if you have any questions. Uh, I'm easy to get in contact with. So thank you for watching. I hope you found this a little bit helpful, and I will catch you next time.